You know, in the middle of a trade war, it's interesting to see, all right, well, we've never been on the brink like this. Well, actually, we were. A brink is probably too, too strong a term, but Ronald Reagan, free marketeer president Ronald Reagan, um, did get tough with the Japanese over this issue that they were dumping chips on our market. Uh, I had to learn that wasn't chocolate chips, it was computer chips, so it was a whole different war at the time. But the president, we're told, Ronald Reagan, later regretted it, that he, f he felt there were better ways to have handled this and that it actually alienated uh, our two countries for a while. He didn't like that. A uh, former Ray uh, Reagan campaign uh, manager, Ed Rollins, here on all of that. Ed, it's always Thank you. Well, good to see you. So he wasn't keen on the move that he took, why not? He was pretty much a free trader. Uh, I mean, there were, the, 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 the chips were so important. Obviously, you know, having been a California governor, he knew a lot about the tech industry and what have you. And the, and the Japanese were clearly oh, dumping they were, them. They were clearly dumping right. And so uh, he knew he had to resolve it. But Reagan always had an ability and certainly a thought process that if I can sit down with someone and listen to their point of view and they listen to my point of view, we can find a common ground. Uh, so sometimes that won't happen, and when that doesn't happen, then you take other other means. But if we can at least discuss what is it you need, what is it you want, here's what I need. And so you began with kind of a different dialogue than, than you have today where you're, you know, I think part of the problem here is there's a lack of clarity. I mean, what is it, what is it we're pretty trying to do here, and, and, and why are we doing it? Uh, so we uh, weren't actually trying to narrow the trade gap. We, we were, the, the issue was they, the Japanese were truly dumping below cost chips on our market and putting our guys at a disadvantage. Absolutely. Um, but he wasn't out to rectify numbers. He just wanted that addressed. He wanted even with that, he was unhappy. Well, well that was an important issue. Uh, the other thing he, he did is he, uh, he changed a, a consistent policy uh, uh, the, the motorcycles were being flooded in the country, uh, right. the Kawasaki's and what have you, and we had, we had uh, uh, Harley Davidson, and they were about to go out of business. Uh, and so he, he worked very hard to keep jobs again. And and why shouldn't uh, why shouldn't Americans be able to make motorcycles and ride motorcycles? And this was the beginning of the Honda, the Kawasaki, right. the whole the whole nine yards. And and uh, uh, and he sort of challenged. Uh, he, he saved. He literally saved Harley Davidson, and he basically challenged them to go out and make a bike better than they make, uh, which was the challenge. And they did. And you know, they you did. mentioned Harley Davidson, and, and, and that's the company that has announced it's going to move a lot of its production outside the U.S. Right. just on the threat of tariffs. So as you and I brought up before, trade wars sometimes produce their own unintended consequences. Where do you think this is going? Well, the, the problem here is, is you don't, the other side has been through lots of wars. Uh, the, the Chinese are very, very tough, as are the Russians and what have you. And so the idea that you're going to sit down and, and make a better deal instantaneously, once you start this and once you, you better be prepared to stay the long haul, because they're going to stay the long haul. And equally as important. And what's the long haul? Uh, that's, that's to be. It's years. It's years. And, and the determination. You don't, you're not of the opinion of the president is that they, they're hurting more than we are, and they need I, us more than we do. I, I argue, having spent a lot of time in Asia uh, myself, is that uh, they, they are prou proud people, and equally as important, their business, it's not like General Motors goes off and makes a decision independently of what's happening in Washington. They don't make any independent decisions. Everything is government and, and the corporate world. So they're all in this together, and, and so... Uh, and I'm not sure we're all in this together. I think you, you can find lots of, as you know from your guests, there's lots of different uh, different. Yeah, the party, the ruling party is largely a laissez-faire party. I yes. mean, it's, it's had to get used to some different rules here. And maybe, to your point, it works out. Maybe it doesn't. But I, I am wondering, when going back to Ronald Reagan, was it his view? He always wanted to come across, even if he got the better Tip O'Neill, not to embarrass Tip O'Neill, the speaker, that the other side looks like looked like it won something as well. He didn't want to humiliate anyone or face down there someone was, in a way, the, even with Gorbachev. Right? There, was, there, there, was, there was a toughness to Reagan, but not a meanness. Uh, Reagan never, ever, ever was mean. He was never disrespectful to anybody and all the time I was around him. Uh, from the, and that was with each legislative victory. He absolutely. Say, what did the other side get? Don't absolutely. rub their noses. And bring it. Danny Roskinkowski over here and let him sit on the stage. If he made the tax bill, let him, let him have a prominent role here. And even the, the whole uh, dialogue of him and Tip O'Neill, they, they weren't close as it's been projected. Uh, but he, he respected the position, and he basically respected the, the members who came on the other side and supported us. So. You're always here at a different times, and that we live in a more fractured world, and now, you know, cabinet officials who get forced out of restaurants, Sarah Sanders, you heard about this restaurant over the weekend. Would that, did that even come close to happening when Ronald Reagan was in office? Or no, it was times? Di different, ti argue, di was di different times. Different times. You know, he was, he was not treated well by the media. He was not treated well by, uh, by a lot of the, the, the liberal... Uh, did that uh, bug him? Did that annoy him? No, because... It, uh, 
he, he had he was the most secure man I've ever known in politics and I've been around a lot of people and I think he had all his ego needs taken care of when he was in Hollywood and he said to me one time he said I was never a good actor he said I, I never had a big starring role I was I, you see you talk about criticism I, I got every time I made a movie I got criticized uh, uh, he said you know I was I was workmanlike uh, and so it was never a question of you know he always had a sense of who he was and what he wanted to do for the country and that was very very important um this president is a very different style. It might work for him now. His, his numbers are ticking up a little bit. What do you think of how he's handling the whole trade thing? Uh, I, I, I think we have to see it play out. I think he's very determined. I think this is his. He's not going to waffle on this issue. I think. I think he clearly has got us in the. But he's not consistent. Ed. Well, part of part of it's the he hasn't had the kinds of experience in international trade, in spite of hotels and what have you, that some of these business types that have had. And, and there's been a kind but of. A, do you think that he's not consistent? In what he wants. I, I think. I think first there's been kind of a divided uh, group inside with different different sure. viewpoints. And I think to a certain extent, uh, you know, he, they've, they've now had enough debate. The gun. And the gun has gone off. We're now in it. Uh, so, but apparently there are real factions on this. Now, real, you had to deal a little bit in the regular. We did. We had, we had plenty. Of, we had plenty of factions. But at the end of the day, uh, the, the president and every president has three or four big decisions they have to make every day. And Reagan had a great ability to make decisions. Uh, show me the options. I'll make the decision. I think in the case of, of this president, it's kind of hard to figure out what he what he wants and what decisions he's making. And, and I think to a certain extent, uh, if the if the game is to go forward, uh, uh, then certainly. Uh, he will, he will articulate it. The biggest problem here is Reagan was a great communicator. He could always tell the country what was happening. There are so many mixed messages, not just there's so many factions. I mean, we had North Korea, we had tax policy, we have immigration. It's just every single day, as you know from doing a show like yeah. this, there's no consistency. There's no two days in a row. Uh, he had a great tax plan. He, he should be out selling that tax plan every single day. Now he's pushing immigration. And two weeks ago was North Korea. It's just, it's, I think if there's any weakness there, it's the communication weakness. All right. And he listened to you, Ronald Reagan, so that made a big difference. Well, I didn't, Otherwise, I, I, it would have I, been a failure. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> As I always say, I lost Minnesota for him. <laughs> well, yeah, right. And then who picked up the other 48 or 49? 49. 49. Well, thank you very, very thank much, you. my friend. Ed thank, Rollins, thank a different approach back then. This new one could work right now. Way too early to tell.